All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we are the Nom Watch Review, part of the Nom Talk Network. Uh, on this show, we reveal, uh, sorry, we reveal, uh, we review the latest film drop or a throwback celebrating a milestone uh, while eating and drinking some of our favorite snacks. Um, so I am your host, uh, Derek Murray. I'll be guiding you along this wonderful journey today. Um, so let's meet our guests before we talk about what movie we're going to talk about. So uh, let's uh, start with you, Andrew. Uh, introduce yourself and tell us what you're eating and or drinking. Hey guys, my name is Andrew Faust. I'm a musician and I love the, the movie we're going to talk about very, very soon. And um, I'm a big uh, anime nerd, big cartoon nerd, comic books, been a huge fan and getting to talk about this. It's going to be really, really cool. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And on a, just to see what kind of drinks I'm actually getting on myself with, it's a lovely, lovely, uh, Stein, of course, with uh, mystery fluid number one, because I don't know what's in there. <laughs> but uh, and then, of course, my classic to mix it up with and make it nice, just to add a splash of awesomeness. Uh, we got the lovely Bacardi. Hey, there we go. There <laughs> we go. Right there. So excited, nice. man. Thank you for having Get, me. Over getting here. saucy for it. I like it. I oh, like yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And over here we have Cosmo. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Cosmo. I'm a jack of all trades, musician, bartender, cosplayer, contact creator on TikTok. That's Cosmo Tasting at TikTok. Uh, and I love this movie. And I love Spawn. As you can see, I'm working on a Spawn costume myself. So it's 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 almost done. Um, yeah, I love this movie. It started in theaters. I had the VHS. I wore it out. And um, yeah, I just can't wait to talk about this, man. It's, it's Spawn. I mean, you can't go wrong. With it, right? Spawn. <laughs> oh, you definitely can't go wrong, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, guys. So as I said, my name is Derek Murray. I'll be your host. I am a film critic and writer for NerdBot. Uh, I also do podcasting, work with Nom Talk. Love this place. The show's so great. Uh, they always come with the fire, and it's always a lot of fun. Always have great guests. Um, so today, I'm, I'm going to admit, guys, I'm a little boring. All I have is, is my little water jug. No, it is not vodka. It's just water. I'm trying to be healthy. Your kidneys will thank you. I know, dude, I was I was on a business trip last week and literally all we did was eat and drink and I, I needed to give my liver a rest. It, so it, it was, was all a, business. It, it was all <laughs> business. All <laughs> business. That's how we party. Uh, and then the last of Jameson that was yeah. out of my flask. So yeah. you guys, I went to you guys drink for me. You guys music, drink so. for me. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. what's gonna happen. Um so and then I am also this is even more boring. Uh this is also just uh peppers, rice, and uh, a little bit of swahi fish uh that well, I cooked up. So, cheers to you, Derek. Hell yeah. Uh, Jeez. Yeah, I gotta I gotta lose the weight from last week trying to get my spawn body on. Okay. Uh, it's possible that See, know, right? make a beautiful, sexy all. body. That is true. I, I do need to die, go go make a deal with the <laughs> devil, and then get some badass armor and abs. I love it. Exactly. Um, some nectoplasm. Oh, yeah, also right. you gotta do you gotta do your random Wanda! <laughs> <laughs> Wanda! <laughs> <laughs> oh poor michael jai white um uh, all right guys so we if you haven't noticed we are talking about 1997's spawn uh that that is correct um it was a real movie it did happen um uh much much to our dismay uh i i wanted to talk about the director for a second but uh i'm gonna skip it because this is pretty much all he did uh he did this and then just a bunch of garbage um but uh, Alan B. McElroy uh, is the writer of this film, um, and I just want to I just want to read we're not going to dig into it right now, but I just wanted to read to you guys his filmography of the things that he wrote. Uh, he started with Halloween for the return of Michael Myers. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Then did Rapid Fire, which I absolutely adore, oh, yeah. uh, yeah. did Spawn five years later, and yeah. then did Left Behind the Movie, Ballistic X versus Se Severs, The Marine, <sighs> Tekken, The Marine 4, Moving Target, The Condemned 2, and he also did another remake of Wrong Turn in 2021. So, so these are all tax write-offs movies. Uh, uh, for like, sure. This, like this guy... Savon, Savon and like the, <laughs> yes. <he> films, whatever. <laughs> this guy is like the U-Bull uh, of, of screenwriting in America. The Walmart $5 bin. Oh. <laughs> the master uh, so yeah. bin. Yeah, so if that gives you a framework of the kind of movie where, of the writing quality we're talking about here. He oh, yeah. I'm surprised he didn't write Annihilation. So. Oh, I know, right? It'd be right up there. Um, oh, so, wait, wait, wait. I have personal ties to that one. I love oh, Annihilation. Oh, come back? Uh, you know what? Yeah. We're, mute, we're muting Andrew, guys. So we're, we're just... <laughs> uh, hey, come on, come on. What's the classic? What was it? Uh, he's like, he's like, too bad. You 
we'll die. I was like, <laughs> 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 all right. So we're not here to talk about Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Uh, we are here to talk about another movie that I absolutely can't stand. Um, but we are talking about Spawn 1997. Um, so I, I know that I'm the odd man out here. So I, I'm going to go ahead and let the fans of this movie uh, talk about it. So, uh, Andrew, tell me about your relationship with this movie. Um, you know, how you discovered it, you know, if it has any kind of personal meaning to you, uh, anything like that. Absolutely. You know, it was about a, pretty much um, I got into Spawn when my cousin of a long time ago, he, he was actually collecting comic books. This is when the, I don't know if you guys remember Gen 13, yeah. like the image comic books kind of stuff yeah. like that. I remember he used to have like a bags and bags full of comics and me being a kid, very impressionable. Of course, this is when you're just a wee young lad, you know, you're just doing it and you're just being sneaky, getting into the comics. I saw, I, I do believe it was a, it was one of the comics with Angela in it. And I just fell in love with it. Like the crazy art style, like it was just so vivid and it just blew me away. This is before I even started getting into the story. Once I started reading more and more of the comic books, of course, it's it's a comic book, so it's going to go into a trillion, you know, a trillion different places, you know, but it was to me it was inspiring. I was like, it was amazing because like the story of Al Simmons, you know, basically from the bottom of hell to basically the creator again. You know what I mean? And he takes himself out. I know. Sorry, guys. Spoiled a little bit there. But um, it's true. It was amazing. And that to me, it was just like, oh, my God, I, I was tired of superheroes. I was tired of the regular AMB superhero. This guy was an antihero. He didn't want to be involved. He didn't want to be involved with anybody's life. But people kept bringing him in and he wanted to protect the innocent. And he used every single resource against like that was used against him against the others. And that to me was like the ultimate rebel battle. And one of the reasons why I became a wonderful musician, I absolutely love it, you know, just to keep up that rebel attitude. It was just, you know, part of Spawn's attitude. And trust me, I think everybody as a kid pretending to be Spawn, you know what I mean? You're hanging down at the corner over there and, you know, you're pretending the suit's wrapping around you and stuff like that. I loved it. Me and my cousin making, making, the red, making the red cape out of curtains. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Heck yeah. That, that reminds <laughs> me of Halloween, my like, third Halloween costume I, I made when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. nice. All right. Uh, so, yeah, Cosmos, tell us about uh, your relationship with the movie. Uh, I used to collect comics. I'm like, I, so I was born in 82. So it's like going to comic book stores, getting Gambit and like, you know, X Men stories and stuff like that. Hell and yeah. then I came across uh, somebody left it out. It was, I can't remember what issue it was, but it was a cover of this comic book and I looked at him like who the hell is this I'm like I love red it's my favorite color and like just looking at him I'm like it's not Batman he's not anybody else who is this guy Spawn like Spawn what and then I asked the comic book guy the guy that owns the shop he's like oh that's Spawn you're gonna love that I'm like really it's like you like Spider-Man I see you always come in here and get Spider-Man I'm like yes yeah, amazing Spider-Man he's like so yeah the guy that uh, draws and came up with Venom like this is his comic book I'm like are you serious? It's like Todd <laughs> McFerlin, right? He's like, yeah. It's like, holy sh-. And I just like, I went to town and started buying it left and right. And when I heard the movie was coming out, I think, I can't remember what came out first, the HBO special, uh, anime or the movie. But like, I was, I, I, so you know, the, the anime did came out. So I remember yeah. I, was, I had a black box, a <laughs> cable box yes. to get HBO to yes. watch Spawn late at night because when my, <laughs> my mom was asleep. Because man, woo! That was way better than the comic books I thought. Um, oh yeah, and, and then hearing Keith, like hearing Keith David, hearing Goliath coming out Ooh. of this, I was like, "Wait a minute, is that the same guy?" And then when the movie come out, I'm like, "Okay, who do I know this movie?" Like the the trailer was like kind of cool. I remember I was watching. I can't remember. I was at like a like a Fox or something like that, watching the animated series, Batman the animated series, and it just popped up. No, it was Married with Children. And it just popped up. It was a rerun of uh, Mary with Children, and it just popped up like the spawn, blah, blah, blah. It was like 8 o'clock at night. I'm like, oh, live action. And, as you know, as a kid, you're just like, you're just gone. You're just loving it. And then I just went to, my mom took me to go see that, and uh, I loved it. I just freaking loved it at the time. Those nice <laughs> Dude, you can't forget about that trailer, man. That transformation no. trailer, that effects on the transformation. That thing freaked out. That was like that was up there with Lost in Space when Matt LeBlanc's like fucking thing went down. You know? I was like, <laughs> exactly. It makes I was like, wow. whoa, whoa, this is cool. <laughs> It's like practical effects oh. were amazing. It was just oh. yeah, mind blowing, dude. That transformation. My, my mind was thinking like, if they can do this, 
imagine what they could do if they did a spot live action spider-man movie with venom like it could it could be like this but ideas are like there they're st- they're paving the way for other filmmakers in the future like here's the technology we're gonna we're gonna fuck it up by doing some horrible movies i felt like gonna- spawn <laughs> spawn came in 10 years too early man too early yeah way too early and it's like hollywood back then it's like this is a great idea let's turn it into a movie but not understanding that there's no internet for fans to be like don't fuck it up yeah, there's uh, so I, I definitely agree that there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of mistakes that were made when it came to uh, just superhero iterations on film. I, I don't think uh, it, it was certainly not the culture that we have now. No, um, no, no. and so it was it was much more about um, creating the image more than yeah. it was of actually telling the story that they wanted, and that's kind of how they capitalized on it. Um, and you feel that kind of all throughout Spawn, where uh, they they clearly don't understand spawn at all they just know that it's a cool looking character um and so they it feels like they started there and then we're like oh shit we have to actually make a movie about this guy uh and then they just kind of threw a bunch of stuff together um so real quick so from the chat uh q says uh what's up and good evening i'm excited for this one this movie came out the year i graduated high school yeah it's my first superhero horror crossover movie and it's a five out of five and come on todd mcfarlane created the most powerful hellish anti-hero uh, mm-hmm. and then and then as a caveat, he said, I got a feeling Derek will disagree with me on my opinions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which he's not wrong. He's, he's absolutely not wrong. Not wrong. Yeah, so yeah. I 100% disagree. Um, and, I, and I have my reasons. As you guys can tell, uh, my score is very different than, than the rest of you. Um, <laughs> so real, real quick. So for myself, I actually have a very weird relationship with this movie. So uh, I, I grew up uh, in a pretty conservative home, uh, a pretty religious home. So when this movie came out, I had the same ideas as you guys right so i was like oh this looks so cool that trailer looks awesome and because i was so religious back then when i saw it 15 minutes in i was like horribly disturbed and i got up and walked out right yeah. so i was just like i was so like the the good christian in me couldn't take couldn't take the devil uh so 15 minutes in i walked out of this movie when i was a kid so i, I know i know so i i unfortunately missed out on the nostalgia that i think a lot of you guys kind of have that that kind of boosted it where he didn't gravitate towards me at, at all as a kid now i did go back and rewatch it uh, you know, a, a little bit later uh, when I yeah. when I moved out, um, and you know, it was fine. I I still think it's a terrible, terrible <laughs> well, you, movie. You're like, thank um, God. <laughs> yeah, I actually feel like I made the right choice. I, I made a lot of bad choices being religious, but that one I do feel like I was saved a little bit. Uh, ah, I, yeah. So, uh, but then I, I recently rewatched it again, obviously preparing for this, um, right. and I, I stand by every venomous thing I'm going to say about this movie uh, as as we get into it. Uh, Q also says uh, I agree with Andrew uh, about being the rebel against the norm. Spawn was the perfect anti-hero that used the powers of hell to protect the innocent. Also, as a musician, you don't need to have to tell uh, what is it. Uh, you don't need to have to tell them to do your shit or to, oh, you don't have anyone to tell you to do shit. Uh, who remembers the soundtrack? The so. soundtrack oh. was the bomb. I do remember that. Manson. Yep. Oh my God. That oh, was, dude. that was such a quintessential nineties thing too. Like oh, I, dude. the nineties, the there was a good, like six or seven years where they were like, look, even if the movie is garbage, <sighs> Y'all are gonna come on and just make a banger soundtrack. They, and they, went all they, did, out. they did it with Batman Forever, they did it with Batman and Robin, they even Only did it with Space one Jam. The soundtrack is forever, Batman Forever. That, yeah, that's it. That's the only thing you're supposed to take away from that movie. Um, exactly. That's how I discovered new bands. That's how I discovered new bands, just like getting the soundtrack. I'm like, who are all these guys in these in like who are this? Who's the music? Who's playing? Yeah. What is this? What you was the corn? The, you go to the record store. And yeah. like you just pick up the soundtrack and look in the back and like, ooh. And then now you have a, <laughs> a guide to go. Like, I'm gonna go check out corn. Marilyn Madison. Yeah. Filter. I mean, come on. Filter. Yeah, no, Slayer was part of it. Henry Rollins. Yeah, yeah it's it's uh, a pretty wild soundtrack. Huge. Yeah, they they went they went all in. So as you guys can see, our ratings are already out, right? So what we're gonna do is we're we are actually going to uh say what our ratings are, and then we're gonna break this movie up bit by bit. Right. Uh and and semi defend our ratings with you know and and 
I'm sure it's going to get heated because I'm going to disagree with pretty much everything anybody says, including you, too. <laughs> I see you. Uh, so um, as, as you guys can tell, so I'll, I'll go first and I'll, I'll set the tone. So um, I, I'm giving this a one out of five popcorns. Uh, th- this movie is just uh, unwatchable for me. Um, I, I it, is, uh, it is an insufferable mess. And it is it, that one star, that one, that one popcorn bucket is for John Leguizamo and nothing else. That that man is, that man. is uh, aside from just carrying the fat suit on his knees while he's crouching, he is also carrying this movie on his back as well as much as he possibly can. Uh, oh, yeah. So so he gets the one star. Everything else is a dumpster fire, in my opinion. Um, but Andrew, uh, t- tell us about your score. Man, I'm gonna have to give it a three, a three, well, three popcorns out of um, five because for me it was nostalgia. It was my one of my antihero spawn that kind of just influenced my metal, just heavy metal life, and just standing up against a guy. And what was it? Oh man, I forgot his name. Ah, oh, it was the dad, um, uh, Charlie Sheen's dad, right? Martin Sheen. Martin, Martin Sheen. I mean, don't yeah. forget about him, man. It was like, I hate to say, it, but he he always kind of looked clueless when he was giving his lines. <laughs> It's so awkward. <laughs> it's like, say, that's so I awkward. Understand. Yeah. And of course, uh, Michael Jai White. Amazing, amazing act that he was built for yeah. that part. You know, um, he's like, first, I mean, that guy, they underutilized him, unfortunately, for this cut of the movie, for the theatrical cut was completely. Yeah, we're, we're absolutely going to get into that for yeah. sure. Um, uh, yeah. So, three, yeah. Three, three popcorns out of three. Out of five. Out of five. Okay. All right. Cosmos. Four out of five. <laughs> Let me tell you why it ass. Oh my god, it rock. And can you bully that trailer? No, but really, uh, first of all, is Michael Jai White, the first black anti-hero on screen. Next, then they, then came Blade. Blade, Blade came after. Bomb. That's right. Blade came after, but everyone forgets. Like Blade is Blade is the shit. Bye. Michael J. White, like this guy comes out of nowhere. He's fucking, he looks great. He kicks, he does all his action stuff, and then they put him in that heaviest makeup. But um, I loved it. And, you know, the beginning is kind of rough, but when you get to the end, it's like that, it's the best parts. Then I, I, I give it because it's just, it's, it's, it's daring. It's, somebody had guts to do it. Just like I'm, Michael Bay. I'm going to do Transformers. <laughs> then somebody comes along five movies later, does Bumblebee, and does it right. Just I, like I, they're doing with, just I, like I they're a, doing right now with this movie. They needed I a, practice. I have a very interesting theory about uh, Michael Bay, which we're not going to talk about here. But oh. off, <laughs> offline, offline, oh. I'll, I'll tell you my theory because it's it's a it's a Michael it's a, Bay would have done it. It's a, a, it's a tin movie. foil <laughs> hat. It's a tin foil hat. Michael Bay theory. Um, so uh, let's let's start breaking this movie down. So you guys All know right. what our ratings are. Um, so yeah. we we are going to talk about. Let's start with the. I don't even know that there is one, but let's talk about the story <laughs> of Spawn. Um, I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist, but let's let's just try to talk about the story of Spawn. So what I am going to ask, though, is we're not allowed to take all of the knowledge that should be in Spawn and apply it to the movie itself. So we we're just have to movie. look at it. We're just doing the movie, the story as as it exists uh, in, in the film. Um, so mm-hmm. Cosmos, we'll go ahead and start with you. Story. Uh, it's you know, it's simple. It's a uh, person. Uh, <laughs> God, this sucks. Put me in a bad spot. Uh, okay, I'm bringing you all over. I'm taking Plot. all your popcorn buckets. <laughs> Plot. All right, this guy gets screwed over. Uh, he dies. You know, uh, he gets backstabbed, and then he finds a way to make a deal. He doesn't care what he has to do. He didn't. He didn't read the fine print, but he wanted to come back for his wife, even though it was like seven or some odd years later. But uh, yeah, and then, you know, training, horse, learn how to use his power. Boom, you got the ending. Everything's happy. So there you go. Done. <laughs> One okay. That's all you need. That's it's a that's typical it. 90s movie. Action, Write it down. action, action. A little sexy. Action, act, action. Sexy, sexy, sexy. Some old man talking, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And then more action, 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 then sexy. And then done. Cue the cool ass soundtrack. <laughs> that, that's like a, that's a one and done dude that's it bro all right uh, so do you have you have anything else to say about the story itself well i uh, heck uh just going back into it just like as simple as they put it you know like i think when you're when you're making a movie you want to make it as complex as possible but when it's already written down you know it's al simmons you know he's double crossed by his boss jason you know what i mean 
and then he gets sent to hell and then uh basically was it Mal- Malbogia offers him Malbogia. A, um offers him an opportunity to get back to earth and see his wife you know but if you accept my deal and become one of my leaders of my army you know what i mean yeah. so he comes back out he totally forgets about the strings attached to us he just says i want you know, and, you know, <laughs> he just comes back. But like I said, there's a lot of strings attached to it. He didn't say you're going to come back to his former self. You know what I mean? And from there, yeah. the anti-hero is born and his his journey begins into discovering himself again. Yeah. So th- some of that is in there. Um, there's uh, th- this. Oh God, I, I, I forgot how much 90s movies. um Jesus. Yeah, I, and look, some some of it holds up, right? I, I'm a huge, I I am such a fan of of '90s films. I I have a a diehard nostalgia for even some of the worst ones. I they look Good as burger. much as as much. I, I love Good Burger. Uh, so look I, as much as as much as as much as my popcorn buckets are gonna are just gonna shit all over this movie. Uh, oh. I. I, I genuinely have bad movies in my good list. So it, d- yeah. don't take this as like a, oh, I hate all things from the 90s. Like, I get it. But I, I genuinely forgot how much uh, 90s films loved two things. Uh, old men narrating stories um, and just the most insane 1997 Windows desktop screensavers to tell their title cards. Like, what? <laughs> what? So I, the way the way that this movie starts and just the 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 ambiguity of all these things that are going on, where it's just like he's an assassin for something that wants to do a biological something, and then there's a there's a double cross, and they're they're doing a North Korea thing, which what uh, just and it just keeps compounding, and then every time somebody else gets it, it's like we meet this old man at the very beginning who has to be his narrator. Who doesn't show up for another 45? He just keeps popping in, and you're like, Who, what are you doing here? And then, even when he shows up, <laughs> like 45 minutes into the movie, he shows up and talks to Spawn, and he's like, Oh, my name's whatever. That's all you need to know for now. And then the disappears for like another 25 minutes. We do the not get. Alleginus. Oh my God, dude. Whoa, oh, my God. Dude. We it's... don't even get a training montage until an hour and 10 into this movie this movie is an hour and 36 minutes long wow like the the drag outs of the story and just the cut like the way everything is edited and all that like it, it's just i i oh, don't man. i get it the bare bones of it yeah absolutely an assassin gets double crossed and sent to hell makes the deal he forgets comes back as a hell spawn and then decides to use his powers for good at, at its base core that is what the story is about. But all the things that get tacked on just feel like they're not actually contributing to that story. Yeah. I, to me, they, I feel like they're just dragging it down. And as much it's as really- I love, as much as I love John Leguizamo, I, I don't know what he, I, I still could not tell you what his actual plan was. <laughs> That's true. I mean, like I said, it was it was poorly, it was poorly cut. I would say it's poorly cut. Poorly just, cut. Yeah. His, I mean, John the Clown was trying to get Al Simmons to get the band up and, you know, do what he needs to do. But of yeah. course, it backfired on him because it's uh, he has a heart and he has his own goals. So it backfired. Yeah. <laughs> it backfired pretty bad. And then we had uh, the an legend. An hour later in the movie. Yeah, an hour <laughs> later. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I forgot Cogliostro, which is, uh, I call it the Obi Wan guy, the guy who taught Spawn how to do his, uh, you know, I'll show you how to use your power. Um, why am I going into the, the, the Mega Man thing? You got to be careful, <laughs> Doctor Wowie. That's, that's about what he sounds like, actually. That's, <laughs> you're actually not that far off, Andrew. Yeah. Mal <laughs> yeah. has to tell you. I have to show you how to use your power, Spawn. It's so stilted and so oh, the line delivery. Oh God, we're gonna talk about that in a bit. The acting uh, is all over the place. All right, all over the place. Um, you had priests, yeah, let's, had and you know what? Still just like I'm sexy and I'd be on like B-rated like Julia Strange movies and whatnot. And then you have Martin Sheen's like he's an actor, but he's not really acting. Okay, then you have yeah. Michael Jai White trying to act through that thick makeup, like. All I see is my teeth and my eyes. Yeah, I think his ass off, by the way. 
Uh, yeah, so let, you know what? Let's just transition into it, right? So uh, we, we just talked about story. Let, let's talk about the acting in this movie uh, because, my God, um, I, I'm i pretty sure the... First of all, this cast is just insane. Teresa Randall, D.B. Sweeney, Martin Sheen, Michael Jai White, Ooh, yeah. John Leguizamo. Like, what are all of you doing in this thing right now? What What is going on? <laughs> yeah, that, that was a favorite of someone for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, but so you, you have all of these different actors that clearly have totally different backgrounds and they get all brought together. And for me, it feels like all of them are in a different movie. Like nobody is operating on the same speed as someone else. No, so, you're right. Absolutely. When right. it's Terry and Wanda, it doesn't seem like a spawn movie. Oh. But when it's Michael J. White and, and like and like John Leguizamo, it's like okay, we're at the movie. And then when yeah. it gets to like when it gets to Martin Sheen and like Priest and DB Sweetie, it's like a different movie. It's, it's like Deep Impact. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty yes. much. It's like three movies into one, and then lots of weird CG. Yeah, lots yeah. of weird CG, and I'm that even, is. I'm, I'm, yeah, don't, we're, we're going to talk about effects, I promise. But let's mm-hmm. let's let's stick to the actors right now. Uh, yeah. So let, let's just stick to the acting. Um, so, yeah. So, Andrew, I'll, I'll just ask you directly. So how, how did you feel about just the acting in Spawn? Honestly, it was, as they said, it was all over the place. Um, I felt like the director, unfortunately, didn't know how to, you know, portray the actors very well. I think they all tried their damnedest to make it happen because Michael Jai White, is a great actor he i mean like i said through just all the makeup he was still able to kind of make it happen with that harsh makeup martin sheen came in i think he was just like i i need a, I need a tax write-off i guess i'll start in this like this is okay what am i doing mm-hmm. i'm an i'm a colonel okay yeah okay that's fine i got this don't worry about it you know um and then theatrical legend who's who played cagliostro is nicole williamson Shakespearean actor what the hell is he doing as an Obi-Wan character you know what I mean he just <laughs> phoned it in you know and of course um, the voice of Malboja the legendary Frank Welker who is the guy that says finish him in all Mortal Kombat you know what I mean exactly <laughs> or, you yeah. are weak you know yeah. like it's like, amazing but it was all over the place I feel like the way that they it was portrayed I feel like the way honestly it was the way that it was cut it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't connect. It doesn't hit as, as strongly as a well-timed, well-paced movie would have been. But yeah. as a as a kid, we didn't care. We we're like, oh, Spawn, oh, Cloud Guy, you know. Yeah, we, we yeah. Just, that's it. Yeah. That's all there is to it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cosmos, but how did you feel about the acting? And like like he, like Andrew said about the, like the director, he busted like a George Lucas. Doesn't know how to like you know direct people what how to say lines how to feel lines and whatnot he like and pretty much no one really knew what they were doing and michael J. white did a good job most of it was brooding but yeah. <laughs> it was brooding and being a just asshole yeah and um, shouting wanda that's yeah <laughs> wanda and there you go. know everybody in their own right looked like they belong in a different movie but putting it all together it's just like no nah, it did not work you have you have seasonal actors with like brand new actors to somebody oh, that's that right there. like like Michael J. White, he's a great actor, but he's known for his martial arts. He's known for his ass kicking. He's just like Aaron Atkins. It's just like this guy you want. You don't have to put a stunt devil in there. He will do everything, do all the flips. And for Michael J. White, I guess it's a great opportunity to be the leading man of right. a movie. But he's not really when you got someone like John Leguizamo. That's it's kind of like the whole Jack Sparrow and like fucking uh, Will. You know, oh, Turner. Man. Yeah, it's supposed to be Will Turner, but it turned into a fucking whole Jack Sparrow movie. Right, all, he, all three of them. It's exactly right. as you said, man. Well-timed actors, classical actors, yeah. with new actors, but with also current at the time actors yeah. like John Leguizamo, who can you know who knows how to carry fire, who knows how to carry a rookie. So yeah. it's exactly as you said, man. There was a lot of and that, different... you know the studio. The studio knew it's like, well, if this movie sucks. We got John Leguizamo, we got Martin Sheen, are bringing the old folks. John Leguizamo bringing the kids, whatnot. Yeah, two hot chicks in it, and then Spawn. If nothing yeah. works, the the soundtrack sells will work. Right. It'll be awesome. <laughs> I mean, also a character. I mean, what was it called? The uh, uh, oh man, uh, the toys. Toys oh. were. Hey, dude, how many Spawn toys come out of that? Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. And, and don't get me wrong, I know it boosted a lot of the sales for that for sure. Yeah, you know, everything did back then, though. Yeah, oh, that's true. That's very true. Yeah, and when George Lucas was the first one to prove that, it's like toys, 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 yep. toys. 
Yep. And, and most of those IP properties were, were designed to sell. Like, a, you know, we, mm-hmm. the way we think of content now, it's to sell everything else, right? You're selling content, you're selling theme parks, you're selling more content and not that merchandising doesn't exist. Obviously that's still the main thing, but yeah. that was it. It was yeah. the movie, the soundtrack and the toys like that. Yeah. That was all they had to roll on. So yeah. I, I do think that I, I will give credit to Michael Jai White. And, and I actually think that, I think I said this off air, but he, he has done a major disservice in this movie because Michael Jai White is a good actor. I completely agree. He's a good actor. He does all of his own stunts. He's he's very capable. I I, I genuinely enjoy him. And this was this was one of those like major failures. I you know what it's like? It's like Brandon Routh in uh, Superman Returns, where oh. Brandon Routh is a fantastic Superman. Yeah. He's just in one of the worst Superman movies ever made. Same and so with Hayden people, Christensen. Hayden Christensen is a great actor. He actually he just... is. He actually is. I, I but... completely agree. Um, and so Spawn is is that for Michael J. White. Like, this should have been, this should have been his Jack Sparrow, right? Yeah. This should have been his launch pad to where he gets a Spawn franchise. And yeah. for decades to come, the way that we associate Wesley Snipes with Blade, oh, no. that, that should have been him. That yeah. should have been him. He's yeah, just true. in such a terrible movie and then, that it, it just ruins him. Like, it's yeah. just, it's, it's really unfair. Um, so I, I feel genuinely bad for him in that. Um, and then, you know, obviously you just have Martin Sheen that just has, has no idea what to do. Like just, just <laughs> no clue how to, how to speak, how to deliver lines, what, what he's supposed to be doing. Like he's just, he feels so awkward. Like, I was in, I was in, uh, what was it, Platoon or Apollo? No, I get those two confused. Uh, uh, which one? <laughs> Martin Sheen? Uh, yeah. It's Apocalypse Now? Uh, Apocalypse Now. Yeah, yeah I was Apocalypse, in Apocalypse yeah. Now. I'm going to take the Marlon Brando routine and just try to act. Dude, I think it was just exactly like this. Like I said, he's like, what am I playing? Hold on. <laughs> is that, right. what, what is that contract for uh, for the West Wing come through? Another year? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Give, it, give it a check. Give it a check. <laughs> All right. Some, something about, watch it. something about watch it. biological weapons. I, yeah, sure. Dude. I hate that guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's right. Right. All right. Cut the check. Let's go. Um, yeah, so honestly, that's how it was. That's how it was. It has to be. There's black cigarettes in a smoking bowl for you. (laughs) All right, put me in. And like, uh, but he, then, wasn't, he wasn't a failing actor at the time either. He was actually no. doing okay movies at the time. Yeah. Charlie, I mean Martin Sheen, he was doing pretty good. Yeah. So when he come when he came out of this one, I think he either like I said either tax write off, like all right, this is just a piss film, or just come in here and see what I can do, or he honestly thought it was going to be a good movie. He probably yeah. had a really good opportunity. Yeah. And there's a lot of that. I mean, people yeah. don't always know that they're in a bad movie. Like no one actually sets out to make a bad movie unless you're you bull. Um, but <laughs> for the most part, no one does it on purpose. Oh, right. Uh, so, so real quick before I get to John Leguizamo and then we'll move on, but uh, real quick, uh, Q has redeemed hydrate. So everybody grab something to drink and we will cheers to, to John Leguizamo. <laughs> John Leguizamo, cheers! Little piece of chicken grease. All right, thank thank you, Q, for that that redeeming. He said the acting to me was meh, and it was all over the place. I wish that someone like Tim Burton would direct this movie and make it more interesting and darker, like it's supposed to. Ooh, so, Del Toro, man. Mm. Yeah, or or Del Toro. Del Toro. Yeah, absolutely. Del Toro. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and it, it does feel you know John Leguizamo feels like the only one that understood the assignment. Like he he's yeah. like the only one that knows what movie he's actually in, uh, and he is just going for it he was yeah. like i forget everybody else i'm gonna be great like y'all can do whatever you want i'm gonna be absolutely hilarious i'm gonna do jokes for me i don't oh, yeah. care if they're in the spawn canon i dress me up like a cheerleader let's go it makes no sense it was like uh. the weirdest guy he is like he is like the bugs bunny of spawn yeah. where he is just He's got the fourth wall. He's got the whole, he's, he understands that we're in a cartoon and he's just like, yeah, I can just, I can do things. Like I can be literally whatever I want. Um, And yeah, he's, he is the saving grace of this movie for me. He does that with everything he's a part of. Yeah. Yeah. John John Lingrisson is fantastic. Yeah. Like I said, it's a guy from Queens. You know what I mean? He just came in and like I said, he was, he's also a, a very comedic actor. So, you know, with comedians, I feel like they have just, they can play with their lines a lot better. It's not even that, too. He's a you physical know? comedian. 
Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like he his one man shows. He's like totally persona. He's like he's third person. He's doing things. He's he's that's that's a perfect role for him. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel like it's very New Yorker, you know, because you always use the hand yeah. gestures, you know what I mean? Exactly. You know, yeah. he's like, well, twinkle, twinkle, little spawn. Got you, like, crap, to fertilize my lawn, you know? <laughs> D- I love, D- D- I, one, of, one of my favorite, one of my favorite lines of this entire movie is when he, when he meets the daughter and he's like, oh, it's such a cute kid. Can I keep her? Oh, yeah, you're right. No pets allowed. I don't know why that is so <laughs> funny to me. <laughs> But that is just like it's so awkward, and you can tell that yeah. nobody wrote that for John Leguizamo. Oh, no. Like wow. he is just going a mile a minute at every chance he possibly can, uh, and I love it so much. I the fact that he does that all throughout the movie is just I love wonderful. His Jimmy to me. Stewart impression too. He's like, oh, no. every time a, an angel fights, a demon gets his wings or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, twins. Uh, oh, yeah. You hear that? Yeah. Oh, twins. Stretch marks. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, he's, and, he, and he just, he, he does it. He does it even when he's a melting head. He, even when he is a melting head at the end, he is still talking shit to, to, to Wanda. Oh, yeah. What do you think of my head? Yeah. Come over here. I'll bite you. Uh, oh, he's, he is head like if. If nothing else existed in this movie, and it was just, I, I want the cut. I want the John Leguizamo cut. Yeah, let's yeah. let's make it happen. Cut out everything else, and it's just John Leguizamo <laughs> going for thirty minutes. That's that's the best Spawn movie. That will instantly give this movie another um, another popcorn bucket for me. Clown, uh, just, that's yeah. it. Clown, the yeah, violating, the, oh, violating, the, violating clown. the violating clown. The violating Sign me up, clown. man. Twenty twenty two is the year to do it. Horror's Yo. been having a ball. Let's go. Todd McFarlane, come on, man. Clown movie. Come on. What are you waiting <laughs> yeah, for? I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm um, ready. Um so we mentioned so Q actually brought up Tim Burton. So let's uh let's Ooh. actually talk about the director uh and and, oh. and, and the directing uh of, <laughs> of Spawn. Um I I agree with you guys. I don't think there's much. Um, because it, it does feel like a very George Lucas hands yeah. off. He's just He's counting the merchandise money before the movie's even made, not paying attention to cuts or anything like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, how did how did you guys feel about the uh, the directing of Spawn? Oh, I'll let you go first, Andrew. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, well, uh, I do know the story behind that, and um, with with Mark, the funny thing is, um, uh, my partner, my partner's father, is um, really, really, I would say, one of the people that are. Uh, the fathers of special effects so he knows mark personally so i heard the story of how that happened and like i said it was his first shot he wanted to give the visual effects guys their due you know and this is where the cuts kind of like went wrong because it was from i think it was like 17 special effects shots to 300 and something you know what I mean? For the 90s. Yeah. And because it was giving the visual effects guys their due. So if a lot of the characters were kind of pushed back because they're like, oh, special effects, special effects, special effects. He didn't like Mark didn't really direct. He was more of a let's put this here. Let's put this here. Let's put this here. And if you guys watch the movie, I know you won't, uh, Derek, but if you guys ever watch the movie, you can actually see how the cuts were done. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can actually see little bit of a uh, little bit of dialogue special effects dialogue special effects special effects special effects special effects dialogue yeah, yeah. he was not used to the the flow the ebb and mm. flow of an actual movie it was more of a visual film than it was a movie you know what yeah. i mean i mean if it was it, it could have just been a still shot and it would have been great because it wouldn't need the characters to portray the, the feelings but yeah. it's a movie it's his first time he had it in his hands, and unfortunately, he put his hands near his ass and took a giant shit. They, they, they try to mask it with the cut, the cut scenes, the cutaways. You know, it's kind of like a Star Wars. They do a like, piss poor job, but yes, they tried. Absolutely. Absolutely. They tried. And, it, and it, that was entertaining because it wasn't like, I, I don't know. It, it's basically a fidgeter movie, yep. you know, just like something always beautiful, something to look at always and- as a kid. That's a very po- good point. And remember, Mark actually worked and he did the T-1000 in Terminator 2. So oh, he's okay. he's dealt he's dealt with a lot of good effects, but what happens when special effects are the only thing, the selling point of the movie? Yeah, where it falls flat, and not only does it fall flat, it has no, there's it's just bones. There's there's no meat in there. There's no yeah. nothing to entice mm-hmm. the person who's interested like in the story. Yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. A hundred percent. Yeah. No, I, Andrew, I, I love that insight because I, I think that that makes a lot more sense, right? Because you you see that you see that a lot, especially in the '90s, right? A lot of these people yeah. uh, and young directors were given these big opportunities, but special effects were so experimental that studios didn't know how to use them themselves, and so you'd get these directors that you know are coming in with high hopes, right? They want to create something, they want to make a movie. And then the studio comes in and they're like, yeah, 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 no, 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 no. All of this can go. We're just going to splash a green screen on it and, you know, try to try to give the Windows 97 backdrop. Uh, and just that's going to be the movie. Uh, imagine, imagine being in the writer's room and the creator's room and like looking at the comic book, see what he does. He's like, how are we going to do this practical? His oh. cape is one thing, but the spikes, the chains, all this shit is like, can we do we go Hellraiser uh, approach and do real chains? Yeah, have it, like backwards, like going at you know, do that whole kind of film trick, or do we? I guess we're gonna have to go heavily in like in, in effects. Yeah, yeah. Too. yeah. And I, I get that. And it, but I will, I will admit, Andrew, it actually that insight and the, and the story that you just shared. I'm, I'm really glad you shared that because I was ready to just. Ooh, I was going to drag Martin through the mud. Uh, he, was, he was going to get a lot of shit for being a bad director. But now, yeah, and, and when you mentioned the cuts, you can absolutely see it. And, and you're right, mm-hmm. Cosmos. They try, they try to do the side swipes. They try to hide it. But if, if you're really paying attention, and, you know, I, I do film reviews, so I, I watch a ton of movies and i i i have to look for those things right i have to look for editing i gotta look for i gotta look for all that stuff and so this movie you can clearly tell that on the editing floor someone came in and and literally chopped this movie up um and then didn't cover up their mistakes like just left all of those all of those chopping blocks right there to see um and you can feel that's why the movie feels so disjointed so it's interesting sure. to see that it wasn't really necessarily the director um as, you know and i think there's some fault there obviously he's young you can tell uh you know the fact that he doesn't know what to do with martin sheen and how to yeah. like how to bring anything out of that guy um which is just insane a great bad guy. yeah great exactly bad guy. He, he could have been amazing so there's there's some blame there well, that but... also says a lot about martin sheen though i mean yeah, that any, is true. any, any yeah. kind of actor if it's like william the or something like that it comes in it's like well let me let me try to actually do something with this shit this is my life that you're putting on the line this is gonna be on my resume so yeah. some actors like them that are seasonal they will have something to say about it but uh, judging by martin sheen i guess how old was he he was like probably like in his 50s at the time martin sheen oh i think yeah 40s? i think he was like 50 55 56 he's maybe? already been well accomplished he doesn't give a shit i mean he no. went straight to a fucking show after that it's like I, martin so. sheen to me martin sheen's like morgan freeman he's just been old he was born old so i, I just i just <laughs> assume martin sheen's been 50 his whole life like i just <laughs> <laughs> when, he, when he's hey, he's in apocalypse now he does still looks old yeah, right. Really right? Like I, yeah. Un- Unforgiven was in 1992, and Morgan Freeman looks just as old as he <laughs> did. <there>. Like, <laughs> that one in the, uh, oh, uh, dude. Yeah, oh like, yeah, wow. yeah. It's uh, it's been 40 years since almost 40 years since Unforgiven, and that dude looks like, Yeah, no, that that All man is been old. I've been old. Yeah, that that man time. was born 45 years old and then aged from there. That's that's yeah. my, um. But yeah, so. Um, so let's let's just I know we talked about acting a little bit, um, but let's just talk about casting, um, because I, I mentioned the cast and I, it is it is wild to me that, that you know, so I'll, I'll repeat it. So you've got Martin Sheen, Michael Jai White, John Leguizamo, D.B. Sweeney, uh, Teresa Randall, um, and then you had the voice cast um, with hold on, you guys have the names. Go go for it. Uh, oh, Frank Walker. Frank Walker. Yeah, Frank Walker. The legend. The legend. Uh, the legend. Um, yeah. So just, uh, just an insane, insane, insane cast, even for 1997. Um, Dude, so yeah, I, they were going for heavy hitters. They want yeah. this movie to sell. They needed this movie. Well, like, it wasn't Fire in the Sky before this, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Like TV Sweetie. What is he doing? Nothing. Let's do that. All right. Put him in there. It was in Strange Luck. That was that TV show. Yeah. Strange Luck. So he was doing that after Fire in the Sky, or did that before. So they, yeah. they thought D.B. Sweeney, here's an average Joe that we could put in. You know, the ass kisser, the guy that looks too far deep into, like, fucking projects and sales and whatnot, and then finds the mistakes and accidentally gets himself killed because he found an error. Um, and then, yeah, what? He needs sex appeal. So he hires someone who's hot that could do the bad guy priest. Like, you didn't have, well, you could have had Pamela Anderson. 
for me. Uh, Angelina yeah. Jolie, if it was a great script, but mm-hmm. yeah, you went with that chick. I can't remember her name. Oh, uh, Teresa Randall. Teresa, Rand- yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah. She's... And what's wild about Teresa Randall? So I, I I just looked her up, and so from from ninety one until she did a Spawn, it, it's insane, dude. She was in the Five Heartbeats, Jungle Fever, Malcolm X, CB4, Sugar Hill, Beverly Hills Cop three. Bad Boys, Girl Six, and Space Jam. So it's not like Teresa Randall was hurting for parts. Like no. it, it's no. not like she was having a bad run and was like, oh, no. "All right, I'll sign yeah. up to be the wife in Spawn." Like that's yeah. not that's not how that went at all. <laughs> yeah, Dang, yeah. Got to think about it. Yeah, like just imagine like an actor like her who was in the '90s, just blowing up, getting all yeah. these TV shows to movies. You also, know. Well, she was a woman and a woman of color, so. That's right. Yeah, also, so oh, back, like, it, it wasn't like today. So back then, it was kind of like she could probably. I mean, most of those projects, like Space Jam, she has the face. She has adorable, like uh, Looney Tunes, like kid friendly kind of thing. So yeah, she oh, also you know, she has funny, she yeah. has a lot of that mom kind of look too, like like yeah. the like the bad mom. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she she because she fits that role pretty well. Exactly. Um, but it just it's just wild to me to like read that and and see that like. You can tell, like, and and I think it's to your point, Andrew, that like, you know, they really were trying to stack this cast, and because they wanted the movie to be great, so it's not like, you know, I and I I was mocking it before, saying like, oh, all these people had to do favors and shit, but like, no, actually, I think they actually thought they were going to make a great movie that was gonna launch them all into superstardom, and they were yeah. all gonna be toys, and everybody was gonna have a franchise, and then. You know that's that's not what happened. No, unfortunately not, man. That, that just kind of blew up in everybody's face. Yeah. So so Stephanie actually jumped in and said that Martin Sheen was fifty seven. Oh, I was close. I was close. I said fifty six. Oh, like, I did a lot with my life. I already had awards. I don't give a crap. He I'm was retired. This West Wing thing about pressing Jesus stuff. I'll just do this. Christ. I'll do this on oh. the side. He was 57. That that just blows my mind. I'm sorry. That is just 57 wild. forever. 57 God. forever. <laughs> oh, I tell you, man. Um, so I know you guys have touched on it a little bit. So I, I just wanted to kind of go over. So I think you guys have you you guys were fun, you were fans of the spawn comics, right? Mm-hmm. So, so that was your references. So um I'll I'll make this kind of the two part. So uh your did <laughs> did spawn the movie meet your expectations of the references of where it came from and what you were hoping from a movie about spawn would be uh so so andrew we'll start with you as a kid yes okay as a kid yes because it was it was like mortal Kombat, you know mm-hmm. the first one in mortal Kombat. ninja turtles uh, ninja turtles oh my god legendary like when you yeah. saw spawn as a kid like i said i know that you missed the hype when you were a kid because of circumstances but for us I felt like I remember my cousin. We were we were just like that watching. We were playing. We were just finishing playing a, a game on PlayStation, and we just turned it off. And it was like seven o'clock. Boom, the trailer shows up. You know, spawn. You know, and then just coming out with the green eyes and everything. The transformation blew us away. I was like, I remember them from the comics. I started reading the comics, geeking out, getting ready for it. The movie comes out. At the time when I was a kid, you don't really care about the plot. You care if the characters look like the characters. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I was I was getting disappointed until the so kid came hold out. hold on. So yeah. I, I apologize and and Q apologized in advance. Uh, but he he has he has redeemed another one. I haven't done this one yet, so this, this is gonna be fun. Um, so he has redeemed sing mode. Um, so Cosmos, unfortunately, you're gonna have to sing the answer to this question. Oh god. <laughs> all right when i was a kid i fell in love with the idea of the spawn dun, 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 dun. and when i saw the trailer and i saw it was coming out i said mom let's go she said it's on <laughs> and i was great i was sitting there eating my popcorn and dr pepper because that's what you get and when it came on, I was happy as hell. And I waited and waited and waited and waited and waited for the cape to appear. <laughs> and finally, I was satisfied because it's all about the cape. 
You can't have a spawn move without a fucking kid. You can't have Batman. Wow. All right. 10 out of 10. Okay. 10 out of 10. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No, no notes. No notes. That was, that no was absolutely brilliant. Uh, I'm not going to make all of us do that. That Q, I hope that satisfies your redeem credit because I don't think any of us are topping that. Uh, yeah, that, that was, was pretty good. Uh, that was pretty good. Um, yeah. So, if, yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Um, yeah. I think, you know, I, I to, obviously I didn't have the nostalgia and I didn't have the long, you know, comic book lore of, of you know, knowing what I was getting into. And I think even now, um, I, I I still don't think this movie meets expectations. Um, I, I think even now, and, and I think especially now, right? Because, you know, now that I understand more about Spawn and, and I'm, I'm more familiar with the lore, um, you know, I, I don't think that this movie really does a whole lot for it. Um, and, and I know we kind of talked about it a little bit, but it really does feel like as much as they wanted to do something great with it, you can tell that they were just like, yeah, the guy looks cool. That's all we need. Like there's, there's nothing yeah. else to this that we really need to do. And then all of a sudden they were like, oh shit, there's a lore. Uh, oh, uh, it's, it's just, okay. Uh, there's just put some stuff together. Like just, <laughs> what, what, uh, what are you reading right now? Okay. That's 57 issues ahead, but let's just bring it in. I see, that's the thing. It's when we had that child imagination, the ability to create worlds with our heads as kids, you know, now that we're logical in our older age, you know, we still hold on, of course, to the, the creativity, of course. But now that we're logical with our age, now we see like we see behind the curtains. We're like, oh, uh, nah, I don't know about that. Nah, it's OK. But of course, as kids, it was mind blowing, man. It just took yeah. you everywhere. You know, journey to hell and back. That's like, Wow. Yeah, my mom already took me to see Hellraiser at the time. She raised me on, on horror flicks. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, that was like, that was like, okay, he's going to hell. Cool. All right. Yeah. Most other parents are like, he's going to hell. I don't think I want you to see this movie. No, no, no. And, and, and he's like, is, is, that, is that Batman? He's like a wannabe Batman. <laughs> I mean, technically. I mean, wrong. technically, yes. Okay, that, yeah. that's the, I mean, that's the thing about Spawn too. It's iconic as a silhouette. To make a good superhero, they have to have a good silhouette that you can notice from anywhere. Yep. Batman has it. Spawn definitely has it. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. They, they, they slap dash it in the movie before he even knows why he can do it. Exactly. Uh, that he has. So I, I, this, this just goes, we're just going to talk about this for a second. It's just, and on the red carpet. It, it just cracks my it blows my mind so he he does the whole climb thing and then the cape like flies him away and yeah. he doesn't even know he didn't even know he had a cape mm -hmm. and then as he flies away they give him that iconic shot of him perched watching over the city with the red cape draping out and i'm like bro that is the end of the movie shot yeah. 30 minutes into this movie <laughs> Who put this damn thing together? <laughs> it's still better oh, looking than uh, Christian Bale on top of that, whatever he was. No, it just, absolutely is. No, it's a great oh, shot. Yeah, yeah. But it's I just, shot. It's such a good shot. And like when you talk about visual effects and whether or not they hold up, that is one of the few that actually looks really good. It looks ripped straight from the source material. And the fact that it, it exists 30 minutes into this movie instead of like, the end credit scene like that yeah. is the end of the movie shot and they just were like no 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 no. this needs to go right now like uh, I, when never I, mind when, we didn't know he had a cape it needs to go right now i mean the most iconic stance is him on a cross with his cape flowing and his eyes glowing yeah and with the That's, whole glowing eyes thing in the dark and, and the anybody back. Any, if anybody was a fan back then they would know that would have to be in the end shot and then roll credits Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. it was just like he just got done executing this weird mission and, weird. and he's so trying weird. to escape, even though he's like pretty much unstoppable. That's the other thing, too. They gave him some limits. They gave him, they, they didn't make him like all powerful. Like he did have some like you can't, you can't run out of fucking ecto or necromancy power or whatnot and you know, you every time you this, yeah. You every time you're, you're you're using the suit, you can you're draining something. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So they they did make him a little bit weak in the movie. Yeah, they, they did, I feel like they nerf him a little too much actually. <laughs> well, I think in the comics he did have a certain amount of necroplasm to use, but he it wasn't did. numbered or anything. It was numbered. Was, yeah, it's like but, as soon as he ran out, he just returns to hell, and you know he has to either find a way out to hell. But, but he does eventually gains like unlimited, especially when he. Yeah, meets God in the yeah, he becomes a deity himself eventually. Yeah. Yeah. He fights you know. God and puts God in the prison. 
in the comic yeah. books, by the way. The <laughs> tell that story. I know devil. you can't, but tell that's that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, so last question for you guys, and then you know we'll we'll, we'll wrap this up. So um, I know we've all watched it recently. So yeah. if if we remove the nostalgia goggles and yeah. and we talk about how we how we felt when we watched it recently, uh, what how did you guys feel? So we'll start with you, Cosmos. I watching it now just recently um because <laughs> it's 90s i know it's gonna be shitty because i'm spoiled with today's stuff marvel dc all that great stuff uh so watching it now i just fan forward straight to the ending so <laughs> <laughs> i go straight to the part where he's coming in like i i oh. fan, i go always straight to when he's coming down the glass ceiling like that man and that's oh. it's, it's one of the best shots Telling in the entire right film and, One then of the I, best part, yeah. and then I watch it from there. That's it. Like every the beginning, I don't need to see. I do the okay. same thing with uh, episode one. I go straight to Darth Maul and I'll be one in Qui Gon Jinn's fight. That, that's all you that's need. Right. Yeah. That's, that's right. That's all you need. But I, I but I like, hate like I say, if it's on, if like if if it's on and or somebody's watching it, I would sit down and watch it. Yeah, and just pretend I, I, I do that with uh, with the Dark Knight Rises, but in reverse. So as soon as his back breaks, I just turn the movie off. There's, yeah, there's nothing else that happens after that. Break, that. That's rehab. So that's, that's so it. true. That's the end of the movie for me. So like I, I don't give a shit what happens after that. I'm, <laughs> the, I'm the same way with uh, the the Dark Knight until uh, like after the what before uh, he uh, runs away. You know. Oh yeah. Before he saves the kid and whatnot. Yeah. I'm like I don't want to see this because it's just a kind of weird ending. Yeah, Two no, Face. It yeah, it could have made it a little, little bit better for making the third movie. But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones is great, man. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so Andrew, uh, watching it again, how, how did you, how did you feel? Well, you know, um, like I said, using the nostalgia that I had as a kid, it was an awesome movie. But now that I've been blessed to know a lot of great people in the industry, you know, I got to hear Mark's story. I got to hear people that worked on the movie. Um, it was an absolute hellscape, man. It was a lot of, um, to, um, it's a classic term, too many cooks in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And you can see it in the movie. It becomes a total power move. You know, you want to show off as much as you can. Um, it was a lot. It was a very dull movie. It's a very boring movie, unfortunately. Yeah. Other than other than the selling points, the key selling points, it's a very very dull movie. It it is, it is basically, you can literally put most of the dialogue in about thirty minutes of the movie, and that's it. Yep. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. You know, because you have what Frank Wilger going, you will pay. You know, it's like come on, like that's it. It's a really and good then, impression, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> But like I said before, it's just putting on all, everything, all the knowledge that you gain through getting older, watching this movie. You see, I don't know, it's like as, as, a, as a content creator yourself, Derek, you know, you see, you go behind the scenes. And then once you see the finished product, you're like, that's it. Yeah. As a musician, Cosmo, right? I mean, yeah. we go through the painstaking process of putting it all together and we're well, hoping this product sells. And this yeah. is, but also this is like, now that you said that, it's kind of like covering a song and making it your own. Now that mm -hmm. I watch it, I'm like, how can this be better? What would I do or what would what we have now to make this better? Yeah. What would I cut out? What would I add more of? Yeah. How would I change the sets? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like if I was going to remake this movie, that's the same way I think about when I cover a song. I'm just like, how would I change it? How do I change the, the blueprint of this shit to make it somewhat better? Yeah. Okay. How can you shine this turret any, any more glitter? <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, you, know? uh, you can you can make a new one with Jamie with, with Jamie Fox. Hey, um, so, hey, uh, hey, 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 They're coming, they're coming from a Sam and Twitch point of view. So yeah. in this movie. So uh, hopefully so, yeah, so so real quick for me, I mean, watching it again, I you can I, to me it's just an unmit, it's just chaos. You like throws, you this, throw this, up in your mouth. This, yeah, I did, I really did. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's just it's just chaos, and it's it's a nightmare. And you know, I I think you can tell that it was a nightmare to make. Um, yeah. and, and sometimes you can absolutely feel that in a movie. Um, and this is one of those. You, you can absolutely feel that this was a nightmare to actually put together. Uh, all, all across the board. So, um, yeah. Oh, Derek, on a quick side note, man, um, um, my, my partner's um, father was actually telling me maybe we should contact Mark to have him come over and do this 
do this as well. Oh my gosh. We we dude. were planning on having him over because that way he can ex- explain himself, which is he's he's very happy to. Like he'll tell you oh, the, dude, the deep what, cuts and everything. You yeah, know, let's we'll, we'll, we're gonna set that up <laughs> offline for sure. For sure. Yeah. If um, I can get him, I'll, I'll definitely get him. No, let's here. do it. I'm so down. Um, all right, guys. So guys, thank you so much for joining us. Everybody who was watching, thank you so much for joining us. Q, thank you for your comments. Uh the sing mode, uh props to Cosmo. Thank you so much. That was thank awesome. You. Um, so, uh, Andrew, tell everybody where they can find you. Oh, man. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. I am the wonderful bassist of Terra Vault, which we're having a show November 10th. So if you guys want to go, we're posting it all over Ter- uh, all over uh, Terra Vault's Instagram, which is Terra Vault, T-E-R-A-V-O-L-T. And we're on Facebook as well. And we also have our own website. Hopefully, we'll I'll put it on somewhere right here. I don't know where what's going to happen. But yeah, like... Um, Everything. Awesome. <laughs> All right, Cosmo, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Cosmo666 or at uh, TikTok, which I do a lot of content in my cosplays at Cosmo Tayson, T A Y S O N. And in February, I'll be launching my first show called The Cosmo Show on YouTube about uh, cosplay places and things and events, things to do, things that I do a lot, like from Wasteland to cons to people in the working movie industry and whatnot. And, you know, their lives awesome. That. So, awesome. It's going to be really Very cool. cool. Um, well, guys, you can find me at uh, D Rock Comedy. That's D R O K Comedy on Instagram and Twitter. On Twitter, uh, you can also find me on Facebook. Just type in my name, Derek Murray. Um, you can also find me on Nerdbot.com. Um, you can check out all my reviews there. I post them to pretty much all the sites as well. I do have a link tree, uh, which is just Derek Murray reviews. Um, that one has all of my horror movies that I've done this year so far. Um, so I'm trying to do as many horror movies for October as I possibly can. So if you don't want to go searching for all the ones that I've done, because I've, I've done like almost 30 now. Um, so you guys can go and check those out. Um, had a great interview uh, with the director and cast of Bitch Ass, uh, which drops tomorrow. Um, super great interview. I encourage you guys to go check that out. But you can find those on all, all the social medias as well. Um, guys, please make sure you join the Nom Talk Discord uh, so you can keep the conversation going, uh, as well as subscribing to all of our platforms uh, at Nerd Talk network um join us for our next show guys thank you so much this was wonderful and we will talk to you guys later all right take care guys